everyone, today I will be presenting on how dual energy x-ray absorptometry or DEXA machines can be used on live chickens. DEXA is a type of spectral imaging machine that uses two x-ray beams with different levels of low energy to measure the density of a tissue. These x-ray beams will be absorbed differently by soft and hard tissues because they have different attenuation coefficients. This allows for the system to calculate the density profiles of different tissues within the body. While this machine was initially only used to measure bone density, further research showed that it can also be used to measure other elements of the body, such as fat and lean tissue. In poultry research, this machine has primarily been used to analyze carcasses. However, further developments have allowed for the scans to be performed on live birds, which comes with many benefits. First, the number of birds that you use in a trial can be reduced. In studies that look at body composition throughout multiple lifetime points, birds would traditionally need to be euthanized at each point of interest. This means that more birds would be required in the trial. However, since birds won't need to be euthanized if you do live scans with the DEXA machine, you can reduce your animal usage. As well, since the same birds can be re-scanned throughout the trial, accuracy can be improved because you can look at changes in individual birds and see how treatment influences them. While performing DEXA on live birds has come with many benefits, there are some limitations to the accuracy of the machine analyzing the body composition values. However, these deficiencies can be mitigated by developing regression equations that would correct the DEXA values to reflect what would be found using chemical analysis. While studies have been done to develop these regression equations, there have been some limitations to previous research. To date, most of these studies have been done on broiler chickens, while only one study has been found in laying hens. As well, there have been several issues of notice. The two primary concerns being how to keep the animal still and in position on the scanner and the impact of feathers on body composition results. The quality of DEXA scans is dependent on the positioning of the subject and ensuring that the birds remain still while the scan is taking place. In previous studies, birds were either given gas or injectable anesthetics before being scanned. Although practical in keeping the birds still, these techniques may not be feasible or safe for repeated scanning over extended periods of time. Instead, we will be adapting methods used by groups looking at bone structure that used restraint instead of anesthetics. The other issue that has commonly arisen is how these studies have dealt with feathers on the bird. Due to the low density of feathers, the DEXA scanner often misinterprets them as fat, although they are primarily composed of proteins. Despite being documented, this discrepancy is often overlooked, ignored, or linear regression is applied. However, no information is available on the impact of age and the subsequent changes in feather coverage, or on the differences between strains and how their plumage coloration and density can impact the DEXA results. The first goal of this study will be to develop and validate a standard set of rules that can be used when scanning live chickens with the DEXA machine. And once these protocols are in place, regression equations will be developed to correlate the DEXA values to the values that would be found using chemical carcass analysis. To accomplish these objectives, we will be using 25 Lohman LSL light and 25 Lohman brown female layers ranging from 4 to 22 weeks of age. Five birds per strain will be raised on campus and will be scanned bi-weekly throughout the trial period. Additionally, five extra birds from each strain will be scanned at 4, 10, 16, and 22 weeks of age. During these scans, birds will be restrained using foam devices with Velcro straps to hold the birds in place. Additionally, a black lace sleeve will be placed over the heads of the birds to lower their stress levels. We will also be testing the impact of positioning on the DEXA scanner by scanning birds individually versus scanning multiple birds at once. Scanning individual birds comes with the bonus of being able to break down the body into sections. However, if you're looking at composition of the entire body, using multiple birds per scan can save you money. To combat the influence of feathers on the results, we will be scanning euthanized birds with and without their feathers. Chemical analysis will then be performed on both the bees and the feathers of the birds. Once we have these results, regression equations will be developed using multiple linear regressions to correlate the DEXA results to the results from the chemical analysis. With increasing concerns over animal usage in research, it is important to find ways to use reduction, replacement, and refinement in trials. Using DEXA on live birds can be a step towards the reduction in the number of animals needed in research. From this research, we are hoping to have an SOP developed for the use of DEXA on live animals that can not only be used by our lab group, but can also be adopted by other research groups. In our lab, these protocols will be used to aid in an upcoming trial which will look at modeling growth trajectories in layered pullets and how these changes influence the onset of sexual maturation.
Thank you for watching this presentation. I look forward to answering any questions you may have. Thank you, Sierra, for that presentation. And uh, I have come an obvious question for following today's, today's sessions uh, and the presentation that we had from, uh, from Edinburgh, uh, from Sarah Spruthers. Uh, are you set in stone in the way you want to immobilize the birds on the DEXA scanner? Or do you think yeah. that could be an alternative? Yeah, I think that what Sarah presented was really good. Um, and especially because we are looking at the birds while they're growing, being able to just quickly make those wraps around the birds would probably uh, be more easy if we were uh, doing the wraps to accommodate for those growth changes. So I will probably be reaching out to her after this meeting to uh, get some advice from her. Okay, now uh, I also got another little questions regarding the feathers. So here, how, you know, how are we, how in the past I've been this feather dealt with? I mean, I know you said briefly they ignored or mm -hmm. use a coefficient because that's a big part of the bird. And if there is such an issue with DEXA, how, is, how has it been dealt with in previous studies? Yes, so in the past, in the studies that have looked at the feathers, um, some studies have just kept those feathers on the birds while they're doing the scans and then used those regression equations in order to correct for those values. Um, there have been a couple of studies who have measured and done a separate carcass analysis on the feathers. Um, however, I haven't found any studies that have looked at that coverage over time and how it changes with age or the differences between different strains of birds. All right, well, thank you very much. And um, obviously, ultimately, being able to model changes in body composition could be a great tool for management in the future. That's what we're hoping. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you again, Sierra.